All right, guys, we are here for another episode of Q10. Trying to get over this crazy quarantine time. I have an amazing guest with me, a good friend of mine, Justin Baldoni. Justin, how are you, buddy? What's up, man? How are you, buddy? Great, man. It's so good to see you. So I'm going to hit you with 10 quick questions about your quarantine experience. So first one out the gate, describe okay. the pandemic experience in one word. Groundhog Day. It's two words. Yes. Two words, but it feels, but I was just talking about this last night with my wife. It feels like every day is the same and we keep repeating, but I, but I want to go deeper. I'm okay. I have one word for you. That's actually more meaningful. And it's, it's how I feel about the virus. Uh, disproportionate. Hmm. Because this thing is affecting uh, people disproportionately based on race and socioeconomic status and totally. Uh, and I think it's important to highlight that. So I, I disproportionate is the like real the real answer. I I hundred percent agree with you. We could riff on that for hours. But uh I hit you with the next one. There's some good ones yeah. down the road. Okay, okay. All right. What have you been binge watching? Nothing. No. Okay. How about I, binge reading? I, I haven't honestly I've been binge I'm writing my book right now. And Amazing. I haven't I haven't been able to it's crazy. In two months, I haven't watched TV, and I for sure have not been binge watching the news. Uh, yeah, it's, negative it's, noise. But um, yeah. So honest, but I'm excited because I'm delivering I'm delivering my book at the end of this week, and so hopefully I can binge watch something. Uh, Good. Yeah. But no, man. I'm. I'm. Yeah. And you know what? I've been binge reading. But how all those teachings of spiritual reality right here? Oh, digging, amazing. Digging into faith a little bit, and that's been helpful. Amazing. So what are you doing to stay sharp and motivated? I know you're somebody who's always super motivated, but during this time, what's, what's helping you? Um, you know, I've had my ups and downs. It's funny. The first, the first couple of weeks I was like, Oh, I got this. I felt like almost yeah. overconfident. And I was like, okay, I can do this quarantine, like be with my family every day, all day long. I'm king of the world. I was like, I thought I was king of quarantine. And then I cracked. Yeah. Um, and I got, uh, I crashed hard and I started to, and I was like, what's going on with me? And I can't even get out of bed. And, and I realized that I was just taking so much on. I was watching a lot of news those first couple of weeks as well. I yep. was trying to understand what was happening. Um, so I was, I was just on back to back to back video calls and interviews and things. And I started to get super fatigued, um, mm -hmm. that having kids. And I just realized like, I need to get on a routine. So I just oh. kind of have bounced back. Um, and I'm on like a routine now, which is so important when you don't have your normal routine. Um, yeah. Fitness, even if you're just jumping up and down, like I'm, you know, I'm standing right now. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, it's just, you know, the little things like that are really important because being sedentary, you know, all of that is tough for your mental health. So, yeah. That's a great one, man. So uh, where do you think uh, content, TV and films, how do you think this is going to change that moving forward? Uh for one, I think people are going to be hungry for content that makes us want to be better and feel better. And yeah. that's why, you know, empathy, that's why Wayfair exists. Um, Amazing. To hopefully, uh, you know, look, filmmaking and TV making like cameras are empathy machines. And that's the whole point of why we do what we do. So uh, I think there's going to be a hunger for that. I think that we're going to have to get creative um, in terms of how we make content. And there's no better people to figure that out than the creatives. Uh, and I think we're going to see a lot of new original types of ideas and things coming at us, you know? So, so yeah. what's been inspiring you the most that you've seen from this, this whole time? People. Yeah. Uh, Baha'u'llah in the Baha'i faith, Baha'u'llah says that so powerful is the light of unity that it can illumine the whole earth. Wow. And, uh, and I think what you're seeing is no matter how dark this virus is, and how terrible it is and how it disproportionately affects so many people. Um, what I'm seeing is, is a world focused on one common thing for the first time in human history. And I'm seeing people becoming the best versions of themselves. I'm seeing creativity, I'm seeing hope. I'm seeing us honoring new types of heroes for the first time. I'm seeing businesses pivoting and, and, uh, and shifting from one business to another to make, to, to help. I'm seeing people donating. I'm seeing all kinds of incredible things. And I'm seeing, you know, the, in the Bible, Jesus said, the meek will inherit the earth. We're seeing like 
our hope lies in the meek. Our hope lies in the common people. Our hope lies in our grocery store clerks and our and our UPS yeah. drivers. And, and we're seeing all of these new heroes emerge and that's bringing me hope. So Baha'u'llah is quote, so powerful is the light of unity that it, can, that it can illumine the whole earth. I'm seeing that happen firsthand. And it's uh, that's what's bringing me hope. That's amazing, man. Great answer. Uh, has your mindset changed from this? Um, yeah, a little bit. My, you know, look, I think, I think uh, I'm someone, I know you're like this. A lot of people are like this. Like, I'm not a fan of the hustle culture. I actually don't like the hustle culture and that hustle mentality, even though I am somebody who hustles because there's a danger in it. And what I'm finding is I am now realizing the danger of the hustle because uh, when you don't have a chance or a choice to leave your home and you're forced to hustle in your own home, you realize how destructive it can be if you don't have balance. Totally. Um, and so my mindset has been shifting to a little bit of realizing that no matter what impact I want to have on the outside world, none of it means shit if I'm not impacting the people that are in my family. I love that. Um, and so it's shifting more to a, oh, wow, I'm writing my book about masculinity but true masculinity is being with my, my kids and my wife. And it's just making me kind of rethink everything because we don't have the ability to go outward right now. The whole yeah. point of this is to go inward and to sit with our shit. Um, so yeah, man, I'm like, I'm digging in and I'm, I'm just enjoying kind of going inward right now because I think that's where the real growth happens. I've been telling people to jump off the hamster wheel. We were all on this hamster wheel every day. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's like, jump off. That, that, that's, jump not, off. that's not... But it's not the best be willing, one. But we have to be willing to look at how we're not jumping off too. And, you know, you're an entrepreneur and I know all the things you're doing yeah. right now too. And, and like, it's important that, that people in, in, at least in my situation are honest and say, whoa, I'm struggling with the hamster wheel. I can't jump off. Yeah. Um, that gives other For people sure. permission to know the same thing, yeah. to do the same thing. Yeah. So how are you going to approach relationships, both business and personal differently? Um, well, look, man, I made a movie called five feet apart a year ago. Yep. <laughs> That's so, wild, uh, right? I, I've been thinking about relationships, uh, a bit differently for quite a while, having worked with so many people who are dying okay. and having worked with so many people, um, who, uh, <laughs> who live any version of quarantine. And I've, and one of the things I've always said is, you know, what some of us take for granted, others are fighting for. Um, yeah. and for me, like, you know, having been through the five feet apart experience and that whole movie is about expressing love without touch sitting in this situation right now, I miss touching people. I miss hugging people. I miss telling, you know, but I think what I'm going to do differently is I'm going to make sure that the people that I care about, know I care about them even more than I did before. And I was pretty good about that. But like now it's about like, let's be real. I almost lost a friend of mine who's 37 years old from COVID-19. He was at a party. He didn't touch the person. Two of the people got it. He ended up getting it. He was in a coma for seven days and on a ventilator. Jesus. And, all, and, and him and I were best friends in our early 20s. And I, had, and I lost touch with him. I hadn't talked to him in a few years. And it just made me rethink everything because God forbid he would have died from this disease. I would have never had the chance to tell him all the things I forgot. I want to tell him or, or reconnect with him. And I just think that this is an opportunity for everybody to look at their address book and to figure out the people that they love and who they miss or who they want to reconnect with the, the, you know, the stupid superficial fights that maybe are existing between siblings or parents and just get rid of it all. Wipe the slate clean and say, I love you. I want you to know I love you and actually take a step forward. So. That's a great one. Um, I mean, they're pretty similar, but how, how are you going to approach your professional life differently? I mean, I, I, I would think, you know, we talked about it a little bit, but. Yeah. I just, my professional life is, it's just, I just want to be clear that, you know, I, I don't believe that um, work and uh, personal life have to be completely separate. I actually believe that a healthy, that there's a healthy balance and, and, I like being friends with the people I work with, right? And, our, and, and something that I've heard for years in, in enter, the entertainment business is it's not called show friends. It's called show business. And I think that's a destructive way of looking at our business. And 
Fine. And uh, I want to be friends with, I want to like the people that I work with. I want to want to hang out with the people that I work with. I want to be friends with them and, and have something in common with them. And I think that's one, one of the things that I'm going to take into it is we all only have so much time. We have to spend it on things. So, uh, so yeah, I'm just going to be super mindful about who I work with and why, and it's never about the money. Can't be about the money. So I've been watching uh, a lot of nights you've been going on live and yeah. connecting one-on-one -on -one with, with your fans and friends. And that's been beautiful, man. And I'm wondering, you know, has this been a really cool experience for you to be able to do that and, you know, and do that often? And what, what has that felt like for you? Yeah, for me, it's like, you know, I was, uh, as you know, I'm a, I'm a, I try to be in touch with the spiritual side of me and, um, and try to listen when God sends down promptings. And the other night, you know, a month ago I was in my, in this room and, um, I just had this prompting to go on live. It was almost like I could hear this voice that's like, go on, which is a weird thing. Cause I never, I was actually afraid of it. I'd never done it. And I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know how to add somebody. Yeah. And that first night I went on and I just wanted to share my heart because so many people right now are struggling and night is the worst. If you've gone through a breakup, if you're suffering from depression or anxiety, if you're single sitting at home alone at night is just so torture. And it can oftentimes push somebody over the edge that's already been struggling. Um, so I just wanted to get on and let people know that they're not alone and that we're all feeling a version of this, um, no matter what our boats look like, right? Because that's enough, like, we're not all in the same boat. Some people's boats look really, really different than other people's boats. <laughs> For um, sure. And it's important to talk about. So that night after, uh, after that first night, I got a message, um, a friend of mine saw a girl commented that she was going to take her life and then she didn't. And so I said, all right, I'm going to go on every single night. Um, and then the following night, I met this amazing young woman named Jazz who was uh, trying to release a book. Her book tour got canceled and her book was about how she made it from someone who was suicidal to the other side. And now she's using her life to now make a difference and help people. And three people messaged her afterwards that they were going to take their lives and they didn't because they saw her on my live. And I just realized that like we're all experiencing just various different uh, incomparable versions of pain. And I just wanted to be, uh, have a conversation and remind people that they are loved no matter what they're going through. And it's been cool, man, like meeting my fans and meeting people and like as answering questions and, and like just having conversations and hoping that that joy translates to the other side has been a blessing for me. It's not just for them. It's like they're filling me up as well. So it's not just like Amazing. me being like of service. It's like, no, I need that energy too. So it's been, a, it's been a cool thing, man. It's, so I'm trying to do it every night. Sometimes I can't. I got to take care of myself too. But, uh, but they are helping take care of me. That's amazing. My last question for you. We get to leave our home sometime, hopefully in the next soon. What's the first thing you want to do? First thing I want to do. That's a great question. I want to go have a nice dinner with my wife That's amazing. <laughs> at a restaurant. I want to like go out to a restaurant. I want to sit down and I want to eat some really, really good food that a chef made, uh, that a waiter served me. And I want to leave a really big tip. <laughs> That's that. what I want to do. Uh, yeah, that. man, I think that would be. And, then, and the other thing I want to do is I want to go like, I just want to have a party and hug a bunch of my friends. You know, me too, man. You know, <laughs> me I, too. I, I think actually that, that beats the restaurant. I'm changing my answer. I want to have a party and I want to hug all my friends. That would be cool. Awesome. Well, Hey man, you know, that, that's the 10, but I want to tell you all the work that, uh, you know, we're hopefully going to do together, giving a ton yeah. of masks away to, to, uh, a lot of people in need. And thank you for jumping on this world with me. And, um, thank you for doing this with me. And it's an incredible mask. Uh, and ben, thanks uh, for making it possible, man. Thanks for partnering with us and helping us give these masks to the, our, uh, our unhoused friends on Skid, Skid Row, man. It's going to be cool. Let's sell, let's sell a whole bunch and make a difference. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much for the time, Justin. You enjoy the rest of your day and uh, you're a rock star, Cheers. brother. Love you, man. Peace. Bye.